Welcome to the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception as we continue our Lenten Reflection Series being televised here in the East Apse, in the Upper Church, in the chapels dedicated to the sorrowful mysteries of the Rosary. My brothers and sisters, the scriptures, the second Sunday of Lent, make the extraordinary and indeed extravagant claim that we who many times are called upon to make great sacrifices in life are not alone. God, in the selflessness of love, unites himself to us. For God also sacrifices what is held most dear. It is God who is one with all who struggle to be free from sin and safe from every distress. For our God is intimately involved in our lives, even when we believe that we have lost our way on the journey of faith. This Sunday, we hear the story of two journeys in our readings, one from Genesis and the other from Mark. Abraham and Isaac set out for a high place, and Peter, James, and John are led by Jesus to a mountaintop. Both journeys offer a new revelation about God. Both require trust and faithfulness when called upon to do God's will. Despite the hardships and the disappointments that you and I may face in acting upon God's word, there is hopefulness in sacrificial love because it carries the promise that God will not be outdone in his generosity, as witnessed in the story of Abraham's call to sacrifice Isaac, his only son, and the apostles' experience of Jesus' transfiguration. They were called to surrender the grounds of all their hope and future into God's hands, trusting his love that is made visible to us, most especially in the ultimate selfless gift of his only begotten and beloved son, Jesus Christ. St. Paul, in his letter to the church at Rome, reflecting on the death of Jesus, extols this great generosity of God who does not withhold what is most dear to him, his son, Jesus. Paul reminds us that by this extraordinary sacrificial act of love, God shows us that he will withhold nothing from us which he has to give, the fullest reconciliation and the most enduring love. In Jesus' death and resurrection, there could be no greater gift, no greater compassion, no greater sharing of our broken world. St. Paul assures us that no matter what hardships we endure, God is with and for us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is Christ. But there is, my dear brothers and sisters, a cost, a cost that comes with such faithfulness. After his transfiguration, Jesus reminds his disciples that he must die and rise from the dead. It is a foreshadowing, not only of Christ's Paschal mystery, but of our and every disciple's call to embrace that mystery in our daily living. To die to self for the good of others and to rise with Christ to a newness of life. In this, we, his followers, listen to God's beloved Son and we bear witness to his word. Can we face our journey with the same radical faith 
that Abraham carried up to the height, prepared to offer what we hold most precious, showing our deep trust in God's merciful love and grace. Will we hear God's words about Jesus that were spoken to the disciples on the mountaintop and truly listen to him, even when we may be asked to leave our pitched tents and move beyond our comfort zone? Is there that willingness to truly change our hearts and to rise above our selfishness and be transformed in and configured to the image of the Son of God. We are all a people, my brothers and sisters, in need of reconciliation and renewal. Only with God can we find redemption for God is for us, empowering us by his abiding presence, both in word and sacrament. May we be inspired in our efforts to live Christ's call to faithful discipleship by these words from Pope Francis's apostolic exhortation, the joy of the gospel. Each Christian, must discern the path that the Lord points out. But all of us are asked to obey his call to go forth from our comfort zone in order to reach all the peripheries in need of the light of the gospel. This is how we will walk in the land of the living with Jesus at our side, leading us along the journey of life to the glory that is God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.